It, it definitely was, Kelly. Thank you again for having me. Uh, Lumber uh, continues on this wild ride, uh, something that we've indicated uh, quite a while ago, that this was a cycle, and it was a cycle that was likely going to be much longer than people anticipated and go to prices uh, levels uh, much higher uh, than anticipated as well. Uh, the volatility of the stop and go uh, economy that we're in uh, only uh, continues to uh, challenge uh, supply chain and also uh, challenge uh, uh, products getting to the marketplace to meet, the, meet that demand. Uh, demand is unbelievable right now. We continue to see projects uh, uh, picking up into 2022, uh, and we don't really see uh, any end in sight. Um, at least for the first half uh, of this uh, coming up here. So to unpack what you just said for a moment there, is it basically that both demand and supply shortages have been the catalyst for the recent move? Absolutely. Uh, a lot of topic, a lot of the topic on the demand side has been mostly to new home construction. But I think a lot of people are uh, neglecting to recognize how uh, powerful the repair and remodel and the DIY segment continues to be. As prices uh, declined here in the third quarter of 2021, uh, we definitely saw a change in consumer behavior when they really stopped uh, at those peak prices in early May uh, and June and uh, it really came back into the marketplace and started to uh, support uh, the adjusted price uh, uh, scenarios. Now that we've gone into um, uh, this, the end of this year and into next year, th that trend has continued. Uh, so we've seen the big boxes, uh, that takeaway at those stores continue to ramp up. Uh, as well as uh, in regionally in the marketplace, such as the Northeast, where you have such a uh, such a large uh, existing home uh, a base, which that base is uh, very uh, let's just say uh, aged. And in order to update it, you, you're going to continue to see uh, continued demand in that repair and remodel. Segment. Yeah, yeah, no, it, absolutely, we see it everywhere. So, is this purely a physical goods market, or is there an aspect of uh, financialization to it? You know, I'm wondering how much did people pile in, for example, in the earlier drive to the highs? Did financial players get cleared out? And who's in the market now? Uh, today, in the I would say it's more of a traditional market. We followed a more cyclical pattern, but because of the supply chain issues, those moves up and down uh, are just much more, more steep. And so we. Uh, uh, I would say we're going to continue to follow a very, very seasonal push. If you remember, uh, we talked about this earlier this year, the push to these two all-time highs started back in Q4 of uh, 2020 uh, and went into uh, Q2 uh, of, of 21. Uh, we're following a very similar uh, pattern again this year. So for all of us who like to look at lumber as maybe a, a window into the broader inflation issues right now, basically you're saying that we've had more volatility than normal and that you think prices will remain about double or more what they were pre-pandemic. Absolutely. And uh, we talked about one and a half to three times more uh, is the new range uh, that lumber will trade uh, until the cycle, uh, um, until we see an inflection point in, in a slowing down of the cycle. Yeah, or you can grow a lot more trees. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to check back in with you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.